Hey, how are we doing guys? Gray here and today we've got our week 2 battle of the UBL. We're going up against Stentoon and his Uppsala Umbreons, I think he is in this league. Uh, pretty sure he has like three different team names, but I think that's what he's going with this uh, in this league. Make sure to go check him out. His link will be down in the description below as well as all the other coaches for the UBL this season. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying the content. Support is greatly appreciated. Um, but yeah, let's get into this battle. Um, now, we know Team Builder this week, just because time constraints. I'm already recording this a day late when I had planned to record it with Gallidite, um at some point during the week, but we never actually end up able to do so. So uh, yeah, going to be doing this uh, post-con by myself. Unfortunately, I, I did enjoy the uh, post-con with Gallidite. I thought it was very, uh, something a bit different and quite enjoyable, but it is what it is. Um, mainly probably my fault that we <laughs> didn't get it. But uh, yeah, uh, if you want to see a team, I'll leave it down in the description below if I remember. Hopefully I do. I think I forgot my last one. I need to probably put that on there. Um, yeah, I forgot to leave the team paste on my APA. So I'll rather do that after this uh, recording. Um, very quick overview. We're going for a uh, boots, uh, two attacks. I think it's sub roost um, on our Curum from memory. Uh, we got Flame Orb, Lapr Lapras. <laughs> Flame Orb Jolteon. Fucking that gets me every time. Um, Flame Orb Jolteon with uh, three attacks and copycat to try and hit a Dragalgy with a Draco Meteor or a Heatran of Earth Power. Uh, we've got a defensive Age of Slash pretty much here to try and deal with the uh, Galarian Zapdos. We have Banded, uh, Blanded, Banded Blaziken. I've not long woken up, so I'm, I'm a bit all over the place. Um, Band of Blaziken, we've got a specially defensive Starmie and a specially defensive uh, Togekiss. Um, yeah, like I say, it's going to be post con because my audio corrupted. We're just going to go ahead and press play so we uh, don't waste any more time. Uh, we see broadly Alakazam, Blastoise, Dragalgy, Heatran, and Indeedee. Um, and a Galarian Zapdos. I think I just said five mons and said that was it. Um, yeah, Galarian Zapdos as well. Galarian Zapdos was probably the biggest threat to my team, just very difficult for me to. Um, keep switching in on um albeit my defensive age slash can do it with like three of the four moves that it's got um if it's got blaze kick which i very much expected to have um or throw chop stomping tantrum one of those moves becomes a little bit harder for me um especially if it's banded to reliably check um the blastoise for shell smash could be a problem but our quick feet jolteon i think is quicker than a modest Blastoise, but not a timid Blastoise. I think I decided that um, try out speed modest was better in my prep because I felt like he was more likely to be modest. Um, here I run out of time. I just straight up run out of time because I can't click quick enough and I was debating. So I spent way too long on my intro, like way too long. Um, like I think I was trying to sort out my calcs from memory. Like I wasn't looking at the screen, I just um, was trying to sort out calcs. My hair is a fucking atrocious this morning. Um, I mean, it's bad enough as it is, but even worse so, because um, I, I literally just woke it up. Um, but you end up leading Curum, which I was debating between Curum and Togekiss. And last second I was like, oh, I'll go Togekiss, no, I want to go Curum. So I just started spamming buttons in hopes that I would, <laughs> you know, somehow make it work. And uh, yeah, we ended up leading with Curum, which is fine. Like, it's not a bad lead in this matchup. I thought it was pretty good outside of everything but Gougie. Uh, Dragalgy is also a big threat to my team. I didn't have a whole lot to switch into it. Um, if it was just dual stabs, flip turn, uh, like toxic spikes, then again, Age of Slash is pretty good for that, but at the same time, I want to preserve health for the Blaziken, uh, for the Blaziken, for the Zapdos. Christ. Um, Blaziken just claims one near enough if it comes in. Um, here I'm just calculating whether or not Flash Cannon is able to knock me out in any world, unless it is Specs, it is not able to. So I'm pretty happy just to go for an Earth Power because if it's not Specs, it's not living the Earth Power. If it's not Shucker, it's not living the Earth Power. Um, if it's Specs, it certainly isn't. So I'm just going to click Earth Power. I'm not too worried. He's got things in the back that can come in on that. But uh, we actually able to take out the Heatran first turn, which is absolutely ideal. Um, yeah, that's something that potentially could check Blaziken. And now Blaziken is pretty free to click Flare Blitz. Um, about having to worry about it. I don't know if it was Flame Body or um, Flash Fire, but he's able to bring in the Galarian Zapdos. Uh, pretty sure he wants to go for a U turn, but regardless, I just want to go Age of Slash. It is my dedicated check to it. So, uh, yeah, we're 
it doesn't put us in a bad spot as well because that was like the, his best way of dealing with my Aegis Slash as well. So effectively, like I was able to knock out like his check got hair. Not not surprising. I got hair in my mouth from <laughs> constantly trying to mess with my hair. Um, yes, uh, if, look how he tried his best check to Blaziken, probably if it went for a fire move, and also is a good check to my um, Age of Slash as well. As it turns out, he was Chuffleberry on the uh, on the Heatran, so actually getting rid of that was huge because it meant I could click close combat for free without having that potential uh, bait effectively come in. Uh, here he goes out into Ndidi. I don't want to risk this being Specs. Specs would potentially do it KO me, and like I say, I want to keep my health on uh, my Age of Slash as much as I can. Just on the off chance, this is like a calm mindset as well. I didn't want to. Um, I didn't want King Shield to scout, see what we wanted to go for. I felt like it was better just to switch out. Because I do have the uh, Psy Shock on my. I believe I go into. Do I go into. Oh no, I go into um, my fucking. Uh, <laughs> my Togus, because if he is Specs, I'll be able to work that out. If he is Scarf, then I'll be able to work. Like, I'll be able to deal, around, uh, deal with the NDD much better. Um, looking at the damage from U-turn on my Age Slash, the Galarian Zapdos wasn't banded, so that made me believe that potentially it's either Bulk Up or a Scarf, um, but it's something I need to be wary of. You just should go for the Shadow Ball, and this damage is quite little, so I work out it's definitely not Specs. That is uh, potentially Scarf as well. So there's two potential Scarfers already. Um, the Heatran certainly wasn't Scarf because <laughs> it just died, but... Um, yeah, we're just going to go for a Baton Pass. The Dragalgy switch-in is super obvious. He doesn't have anything else that really wants to switch in. I don't think he wants to let this stay in and uh, get, like, Thunder Waved or something. So um, I could have just gone for Thunder Wave and then Baton Pass, but I didn't really have a great switch into to Dragalgy. So I didn't want to take the hit. I just decided to uh, Baton Pass straight out. And if he stayed in there, I would have taken the Shadow Ball just fine if it was choice. If it wasn't choice, we would have found out. And, uh, yeah, we're able to give him momentum back. Um, go into Starmie, and at this point with the Psychic to rain up, I'm pretty happy just to click Psy Shock because uh, Psy Shock. Firstly, this is my like dedicated switch in to an extent um, to Blastoise Dragalgy. Um, I guess also to Alakazam. Like Starmie had a lot of pressure on it in this game, um, so I got to kind of work out when it's a good time and bad time to bring in Starmie. But um, yeah, this is basically a free Psy Shock. If he goes into anything on his team, it just doesn't want to take this hit. Um, his one resist doesn't take Psy Shock well in the Psychic Terrain. It will actually be two KO'd. So, uh, yeah, pretty happy to click Psy Shock. Um, but I also want to preserve the health. So if he does go into DD here, or into Alakazam, um, I will probably just switch out because I don't want to take a Shadow Ball. Um, mainly because the Trigalgy is still here. It's still a threat. Once the like Galarian Zapdos goes down, then I'd probably be happy to... Uh, let Starmie take the damage because then Aegis Slash can deal with this Dragalgy pretty effectively. It's actually very good against a lot of the things that are left. Um, as he takes a, a, quite a while actually over this, this turn, he decides to switch out, of course. Like, I don't think he wants to give Dragalgy that quickly, and he does go back out into the Indeedy. Um, this probably is his best switch in because he doesn't want Sam's potential Sash to be broken. And we do just do over half, and I. If I didn't want to take the Shadow Ball, I would have just clicked Psy Shock again. Um, I do have a pretty safe switch out into um, into my Togekiss. But I, I, I am debating right now whether or not I want to go into uh, Togekiss or whether I want to just stay in and take the Shadow Ball. Like, I take the Shadow, shadow Ball just fine, especially because it's Scarf. It's not really doing all that much damage. Um, Psy Shock obviously knocking this out again. I should have really looked at the amount of turns of Psychic Terrain that were left. I made a decision then. Uh, but I decided to go for a flip turn, which actually doesn't really help me all too much, because if he does go back into Gouji, then, uh, yeah, I, I'm not actually gaining much at all. Because I, I straight up don't have a good switch into this Dragalgy. Um I mean, I guess I could have gone into my Age Slash and just uh, click Shadow Claw. I was specifically slower than Dragalgy. I was like very min speed, but, or almost min speed, um, to be able to underspeed the Dragalgy so I could always be in my shield form, uh, just in case I had Shadow Ball. 
Because Draco also hurts. Draco does do some good damage when I'm in blade form. Um, but this leaves me in a position where I don't really have the greatest of switch-ins. Um, don't want to lock myself particularly into Earthquake when there's still the... Uh, in fact, actually, I, I don't think I had Earthquake. I think I had knock-off U-turn. Um, I mean, I could have bluffed the Earthquake, actually, on Blaziken. That was a, something I could have done. And uh, I'm not sure whether or not he's going to fear Spex at this point. I think Spex has a good chance of knocking out a Dragalge unless he's very spadef. So uh, with that in mind, I was like, okay, maybe I can just sub and he'll want to switch. Like, there's, there's no world in which Draco Meteor from Dragalge doesn't end up breaking my sub, even at minus six. It still does like 30% uh, min from memory. Um, so I was thinking if I can sub and he switches, and I'm in a great position if he subs and... If I sub and he doesn't switch, then he loses two of his Dracos. I can effectively sub-stall him. Uh, but he does stay and he does just Draco, so he loses two of his Dracos here. And that's really his best way of hitting the Starmie, so I realistically would have been happy to have just like taken all of his PP here. Um, I wanted to sub again, but I decided it's, it's not worth it. It was like a minus two. It's probably better just to go into like Starmie or Tokyo. Uh, well, it'll be Starmie. I assume I go Starmie here. Yeah. And it's better to go into Starmie and uh, take this minus two hit than waste health on my Kyurem. Um, as he actually just goes for a flip turn. So if I had subbed, that would have been great for me. But you know, it, it is what it is. I perhaps, like in hindsight, subbing again was the play because um, he would still be losing two Dracos per. Draco and you only have four of them. So yeah, subbing again would have been a better play. But it is what it is. I think subbing almost gave me like a guaranteed uh like it gave me guaranteed damage, it almost gave me a guaranteed knockout on something, I think. But he goes back out into the Zapdos, and once again we go out to AG when we're not messing around with this. Um he also doesn't have a great way of dealing with AG, so uh yeah, he has to basically pick a sack to AG every time it comes in. I say pick a sack, there's definitely ways he can work around it, but um, he just goes for the U-turn again. This is going to do all of six damage. And I believe here he goes into the Indeedy. <clears throat> and since I know this is Scarfed, I do a quick calc. Uh, see how much Shadow Ball is doing. He does not have a Shadow Claw switch in at this point. He just doesn't. Um, his entire team like gets 2 KO'd effectively by it. Um... I guess the Zapdos doesn't. It doesn't get to a KO'd, but um, it's not really taking full advantage of the Psychic Terrain if it comes in. Uh, I, honestly, if you <laughs> like doubled out into Zapdos here, that might have been his better play. But we just click Flash Cannon, actually. Uh, as he clicks Expanding Force, which does even... I think it's about the same as Shadow Ball, actually. <laughs> uh, maybe a little bit less. And uh, yeah, Flash Cannon does do enough here to knock out and um, like Shadow Claw, oh no, wait, yeah, it's, it's normal type. That's why I didn't click Shadow Claw. Um, <laughs> yeah, that makes a lot more sense now. Uh, yeah, just early morning brain lapse. Uh, yeah, so Flash Cannon's able to take out the... Uh, the Indeedy. Jesus Christ, what has happened to me? Um, as he goes out into the Alakazam, and on this turn, I'm not going to lie, I actually time out. Um, I'm too busy doing calcs. So initially, like right now, I'm just thinking, okay, like does Alakam, Alakazam just kind of win if he is able to set up a nasty plot and I'm not able to get my quick feet going? Because at this point, it effectively is, um, yeah, my, my Jolteon is probably not going to be quicker. I don't think it's going to be quicker because I'm outspeeding um, like things that are creeping base 100 or something on my team. Base 95, maybe. Um, I'm modest with like enough. So I'm creeping Blastoise, which I think is creeping base 100 or so. Another. I I don't remember exactly what my Jolteon was doing, but I know it was slow. So now I'm just deliberating whether I want to uh, want to switch into Togekiss or whether I want to go into. Uh, whether I want to stay in. I do a Calc here, and I'm like, no, nah, I want to stay in. Um, I want to stay in and click Shadow Claw. Was like my decision. 
and it was just too late. Unfortunately, <laughs> I get rewarded for it. He goes for the nasty plot. As uh, I'm going to just click flash cannon because that's the first move on my um, in my move pool. And uh, yeah, we get rewarded for timing out, which kind of sucks. But uh, my play was, I was going to make that play regardless. It sounds really disingenuous after the things happened. But because I was calking, I was like, I just get decimated by this thing. Um, I need to get damage on it. Otherwise, I pretty much just lose. Um, yeah, I decided to go for the Shadow Claw just way too late. Like, way too late. Um, and yeah, now I'm able to just King Shield, see out the Psychic Terrain. Expanding Force is still going to hurt, despite there being no terrain. Um, but certainly not as much as it would have done before. Uh, he has to go for a Shadow Ball, I felt, for him to knock me out here. Um, it's still pick a sack. I still got to pick a sack because there's what, one more turn of Psychic Terrain. Um, once that turn of Psychic Terrain is gone, yeah, there you go, there's one more turn. Once the Psychic Terrain is gone, I'll be able to um, just Shadow Sneak it. And also, if my Jolteon does get the um, Quick Feet boost, then it's also going to be able to... Um, it would take this out afterwards um, with a Shadow Ball, unless it's Cassid Berry, um, but I think Thunderbolt still does the job. So we take that Shadow Ball pretty well, and maybe I should have looked at that and gone, okay, well, it's a roll, it looks like a roll on his part to knock me out with Shadow Ball. Maybe I can go back into AG and be greedy, but I don't think that's what, ever worth it. I genuinely don't think that's worth it at any point. So uh, yeah, he just goes Expanding Force, Tokus goes down. Tokus' roll in this game was kind of like gone. I don't remember what Tokus was necessarily here for. Um, I guess it was a Draco, prevent Dracos. Uh, there was probably something else on the bench that it was here for, but uh, the Thunder Wave was going to be nice for Blastoise, should I be able to do that. Um, yeah, I'm just going to go into Age Slash, the Psychic Train's gone. And uh, normally on my movesets, you'll see I've got Shadow Sneak above Shadow Claw. Uh, normally I would have Shadow Claw and then Shadow Sneak, and we're going to see that I, um, I may or may not misclick. <laughs> on this turn because uh, I'm just so used to how I normally lay out my moves that I decided to uh, decide to go for well I would normally be Shadow Sneak and I mean I'm just gonna, just gonna slide this to one side so you can actually see my live reaction <laughs> uh, yeah so <laughs> I, I was very relieved because I did just lose the game there if um, if he had stayed in, but like he had to predict the shadow sneak, I guess. So like this was a good play, but fuck me, it was a bad play. It was a terrible play. Like shadow sneak and then just shadow clawing this thing gives me the same end result. Like it's not. Like, I've got the damage on it, so it is what it is. Like that's great and all. Um, but I'm just then going to King Shield. Like every time I can King Shield here, I'm going to King Shield because I want to try and get as much health as possible to be able to do it. Blaziken. Um, Blaziken, I keep saying Blaziken because it's got Blaze Kick. Um, to deal with the uh, Zapdos, I don't care about the Toxic Spikes going up at all because um, I am boots on uh, Kyurem and boots on the Starmie as well. My Jolteon now actually gets his Quick Feet activated from turn one, which is actually better for me, so it's actually helped me with that. Um, Age Slash is immune to him, and so the only thing that really cares is Blaziken, and Blaziken's clicking a button. Like, it's not needing its health. So, uh, we're gonna Shadow Claw here, I believe. Just Shadow Claw spam at this point is incredibly free. There's not a single thing that wants to switch in. I'm kind of surprised that he switched out and didn't just go for, like, Dracos. If he had just gone for, like, Draco spam, try and chip me down, um, then send out the Zapdos, then maybe it's a bit more of a problem for me, but he did always struggle, I think, to be able to do enough damage. So, um, maybe he needs to hard switch on a, a... I think that was probably his better play was just hard switching on a uh, King Shield turn. But, you know, it is what it is. He, wants, he didn't expect me to have Shadow Sneak probably at this point because I didn't click it. Um, I don't care about the Defiant. I'll be honest, I kind of forgot about Defiant um, when I clicked, <laughs> clicked King Shield here. But I need to be in, like, it, I had no other play, really. So, uh, this, though I gave him Defiant Boost, I also, if I was not in shield form, I just died to this Blaze Kick. Um, if he was Choice Banded, then obviously this would have mattered more, but I had already seen that he isn't Choice Banded. 
Um, but yeah, I need to be in chill form. I think even Choice Band, I had a chance to live Blaze Kick, uh, judging off the damage it's going to do. Um, my play here is just a Flash Cannon into Shadow Sneak, so I don't mind giving him the one boost because um, I'll be able to take the Blaze Kick, I'll be able to Flash Cannon, and then I can King Shield again, give him another boost, um, but then I'll be able to Shadow Sneak. So there's no way to sap those unless it gets like a crit burn or something. I don't think there's any way it's able to uh, do damage. Actually, looking at that, Bandit probably would have just knocked me out. Um, looks quite likely the Bandit. Uh, Bandit, maybe I would have just barely lived, but uh, we see no burn. Flash Cannon is going to do a very good amount of damage. If I was burned, I don't know whether or not I take this out. And uh, a plus one it probably just run through the rest of my team. Granted, it's locked into Blaze Kick, and I know it's locked into Blaze Kick, so I could have just gone Blaze Kick afterwards and dealt with it. But um, we are going to uh, easily be able to pick up the kill with Shadow Sneak, so I'm happy to King Shield, just get a bit more health back. Um, just, again, AG is very slowly building its health back up. <laughs> it's going to end this uh, exchange against a plus one Zapdos in the green, which is absurd. AG is broken. Just clicking a quick shadow sneak, I actually, you know, click the right button. I think I go down twice there as well. I think if I saw that properly, I just went down twice and then uh, <laughs> I was like, nope, go back up one. So we're able to knock out a uh, knock out Lady Zapdos. As long as the Blastoise doesn't come in, then I can go for King Shield. Because Blastoise is now like the biggest threat that's left. As long as I've still got this and I've got uh, my Jolteon, then uh, Alakazam can't win. Uh, is he just going to Blastoise? Uh, this thing, yeah, is pretty much his win con at this point. If he Shell Smashes, then uh, we're in for a bad time, but I do have the Quick Feet Jolteon. Um, which I, I believe, like, here I'm just like, okay, so if he goes... Excuse me, if he goes for uh, the Shell Smash, then I need to go just hard Jolteon. Um, if he stays in and clicks Surf, that's a bit annoying for me. I don't want to lose my uh, Age of Sash this early. I say early as if this is going into the end game, but um, whilst he's still got that Dragalgy around, I definitely want to try and keep um, want to keep this as healthy as possible because I'm probably going to have to use Starmie to deal with this Blastoise. Like once I've scoured out his move set a little bit more, um, the flip turn damage means that we do still take a plus two Dark Pulse or as a, a roll, but probably a roll in our in our favor. Um, yeah, I almost time out again, um, but fun fact, my opponent actually, <laughs> he does time out on this turn. Um, he was deliberating between Shell Smash and Surf, and uh, yeah, he times out. We got into Jolteon, and he's actually just going to Surf our Jolteon, so uh, we end up taking a good chunk of damage. But um, I am able to gather from this that I'm pretty sure it's modest. It looks modest damage. I am not convinced myself that like that 100% is um, but I like I decide here that it's got to be like it's enough for me to want to click Volt Switch because the Dragality still, still seems like a great switch in he still has the opportunity to set up with us later um, so I don't think he's going to stay in uh, we're able to just Volt Switch out and we're able to get <laughs> once again get AG back in um, get a little bit more health on AG because it's not going to take Toxic Spikes it's just going to get leftovers recovery uh, we are slower than this so uh, we are going to be able to take the hits whilst in shield form, and it's not going to be really doing any damage to me. Um, I believe I even kick shield first turn here. I think I click, click king shield. Like like I said, every time I can click king shield, I click king shield. <laughs> um, just because I want to get a bit more recovery, and I know that's given the drag algae recovery as well, but that's not too bad for me. Like that's absolutely fine as long as it's going to get weakened, then it's all good. Like you can't switch into shadow claw at this point. If his Blastoise switches into Shadow Claw, eventually it's going to um, be in like Shadow Claw, um, two Shadow Claw and Shadow Sneak range. So I think he knows that. And his best play is to get his Blastoise in whilst I'm in Blade form. So, um, yeah, because if he hasn't got Dark Pulse, he can't do enough anyway. And I'm just going to do a whole bunch of damage to him um, whilst I'm in that safety net of being behind my shield. So, yeah, Shadow Claw is looking like it's going to be a 3 at KO. So, I'm, I'm just literally going to click 
King Shield again, as I think he does go Hard Blastoise here. I think he goes Hard Blastoise um, to try and set up and then realises that I'm just at too much health. Like Dark Pulse doesn't knock me out from this range in Shield form. Because he's seen that I've got a little bit of like Spadef as well. I'm pretty sure I've got something in Spadef going on as AG. Um, so yep, yeah, we're going to once again <laughs> into, into the sh uh, Shield form. This is basically half the battle, it's just me clicking King Shield. Um, I have really no interest in clicking King Shield again here, I believe, so I'm just going to click Shadow Claw. Because if I let him set up, then that's worst case scenario for me. I know that I have the Jolteon in the back. But uh, yeah, he is going to switch. Whether or not he was predicting me to go for um, go out into my Jolteon, I don't know. But now we're just going to click Shadow Claw. I think it's more likely that he just wants me in Blade form when the Blastoise comes out. So yeah, the Shadow Claw is able to pick up the knockout on Dragalgy. And now, regardless, like I don't need this for Zam because I'm already quick feet, and I know his Zam's not going to be quicker. Um, it's not going to be quicker than my Jolteon. I just need to keep Jolteon healthy. If Jolteon's alive, then I don't lose to Zam. So my play here is just to Shadow Claw. If he Shell Smashes, then he Shell Smashes. If he doesn't, if he clicks Dark Pulse here, then that's fine. I, I can just go into my Starmie and what well, click. Uh, I guess click, uh, or I could cure him. I could cure him quite freely actually at that point. Um, yeah, cure him and just click uh, freeze dry. Like it would do so much damage that he wouldn't be able to set up on it. Um, and then Jolteon can clean up the game. So um, I think Jolteon's Thunderbolt also would have just knocked this out, but I didn't know his set fully at this point. Uh, so he does go for the Shell Smash. Clicking Shadow Claw is always my play. It's the one move that doesn't allow him this free setup. And like I said, I have ways of uh, dealing with this thing at plus two. Uh, if he's got Dark Pulse, then this gets a little scarier, but he has to be modest. Uh, that's right, he has to be modest to knock out my Starmie. If he was timid, he didn't knock me out. Like, it, there was only a roll if he was uh, modest Dark Pulse. So I'm quite happy just to go for damage. Get a clean 60% on that uh, Shadow, uh, Shadow Claw. And I'm just going to Shadow Sneak for the extra damage. I don't know what his item is at this point because he hasn't revealed um, hasn't revealed an item because he, when he clicked Surf the first time, there was no Life Orb. Um, he ha didn't show the uh, the White Herb when he set up because we were able to do that much damage. So I'm thinking maybe this was Sashed. Um, honestly, not entirely sure. The fact that he switched out against my Jolteon earlier as well makes me think that maybe uh, he isn't Wakanberry, but if he was, then maybe he was scared of the uh, Volt Switch. Um, as Aegislash is finally going to go down. <laughs> it's been on the field for most of this entire battle. Finally going to go down. Uh, Aegislash putting in the finest of work, as it always does. Um, and yeah, we're going to go out into Starmie. Because, like I said, I just need Jolteon alive. And this is my guaranteed way of telling whether or not he's timid or modest. Because, um, yeah, timid would not be able to knock me out with the Dark Pulse. If he doesn't have Dark Pulse, then I knock him out with Psyshock. And though I may lose Differential by doing this, I don't end up losing the game potentially. So uh, I felt like... Also, if this had Aqua Jet, that was another thing. If this had Aqua Jet, then it knocked out my... Um, knocked out my Jolteon. And that's the worst case scenario because I would have struggled. Because I, I don't think that Starmie can 2 it KO the Alakazam, but it could definitely 2 it KO me. So fortunately, he doesn't have the Dark Pulse. We are able to knock out the Blastoise, and it's just Yalakazam left, and um, I know full well, like, i sure I've got to sack this thing, but I can just go out into my Jolteon afterwards and click Thunderbolt. It is in range of Thunderbolt. Um, I didn't want it to be Kasibberry, just a random Kasibberry for potential Shadow Sneak um, Aegislash. And if it was Kasib, then it would have lived the Shadow Ball. Uh, so I'm just going to sack off my Starmie here, go into my Jolteon and click Thunderbolt. And, uh, spoilers, we're going to be able to pick up the 3-0 win over Sventoon. Um, we got a little bit lucky. Definitely got a little lucky um, with the uh, turn we timed out. If he had just clicked Shadow Ball there, then obviously we lose our um, lose our best way of dealing with this Alakazam. But at the same time, I knew that if he wanted to click Nasty Plot, that was going to be the turn he was going to do it. It was just a, a risk, and I ended up timing out, and the risk was made for me. So... 
uh, yeah, call me lucky and bad for that turn, and also the turn in which I misclicked, but um, yeah, he said that he was planning to Shell Smash on the um, Jolteon coming in, and if he had done that, then he would have lost like, all that damage on Jolteon, and would have made Jolteon just be like, like that would be, my end game would have been so much freer with it. Uh, but yeah, uh, he also timed out and got rewarded for the timeout, I guess, like it kind of balances itself out. I don't know. I think my one was much more important because I was still able to keep Jolty on alive. I was able to keep it healthy. Um, I didn't even think about the Aqua Jet when I Vol switched the first time, but um, I don't know if it would have done enough or not. But yeah, good game to Sven. Make sure to go check him out. His link will be down in the description below. He will be uh, live coming this game, so make sure to go and check that out because it's um, probably going to be much more... Um, entertaining than the postcom i just i, I don't I'm not a big fan of postcoms by myself so uh yeah it's probably not the best not the best uh recording at all i definitely prefer live comming at this point but uh yeah good game to sven we move to one on one plus one i think and we face goldoa dragon next week um he's got a pretty scary team but um yeah my, my build is going to be interesting for it so it's what definitely want to check out and uh yeah, if you enjoyed the battle, please leave a like, subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. And until the next one, have a great day, guys. Peace.